Hello? The sound is great? Okay, so we can start. Um, my name is uh, Lukas Vivitsky and uh, I work as a SwitchArt uh, core team member. I'm going to present to you an interesting topic about the application integration with SwitchArt. Uh, so, as, as I see on the audience, well, it's not the top uh, topic. I mean, those times the most important is uh, cloud, cloud computing, no SQL and so on. So the application integration is uh, less uh, popular. Uh, it used to be very popular five, six, uh, seven, eight, nine. Uh, years ago, when it was all this stuff of the, about the SOA, so Red Hat is uh, uh, not worse than uh, other uh, providers. We still do the application integration. We do also the uh, cloud computing and the rest of uh, popular stuff. But we still trying to improve uh, existing product. Uh, that's uh, why SwitchArt was uh, was created. So SwitchArt is uh, a new community project. Uh, it was. Um, created outside existing uh, JBoss ESB project because, uh, well, it, it's totally different. Uh, on top of the ideas uh, uh, behind the JBoss ESB uh, to solve the problem we, we know, or Red Hat knows with the JBoss ESB because I didn't work with uh, JBoss ESB at all. Uh, so b because all this stuff, uh, they decide to, we decide to create a new project and uh, it's called SwitchArt. Uh, I'm, I think the name is fits, fits great to the application integration because we all the time switch the different things, data from one place to the second place. So the, the name, name fits really, really well uh, to the product, to the uh, SwitchArt um, in place. So uh, JBoss ESB still will be in, uh, still going to be supported for for. Um, uh, um, maybe next year. I, I'm not sure, but it, it, it don't. It, it won't disappear after release of the switch out. It, it, it will be supported. However, um, slowly uh, there there will be some transition from the JBoss ESB to the new application model. Um, and uh, what what, I what is really important uh, uh, in switch out? We really focus it to create a integrated environment to. Uh, make, make user experience really uh, nice to uh, solve all typical problems you, you could have with uh, with uh, um, with application server with creating the application to minimize the effort you need to start developing the integration with, with SwitchArt. You just unzip the application, install the JBoss tools, and run. And the the first project you can create only by the two clicks to using the wizard. I hope that will help you using the switch art. And uh, well, as I already said, it, it, it's, it was meant to solve the problems with the JBoss ESB. So hopefully there will be no more problems. Of course, there will be uh, some diff different, uh, different problems, but uh, we are young as, as the project. Switch art is uh, only, uh, I mean, one and a half year old. So, so we are still learning new stuff. Uh, and uh, if you have any ideas, just catch me after the presentation, you can pass. Okay, so uh, let's go to the service-oriented architecture. Uh, I, I mentioned that uh, there was some buzzword about that uh, a few years ago. It still exists, but uh, when you recall the SOA, uh, you probably remember this, this diagram showing the uh, enterprise ser service bus as the core of the uh, SOA uh, introduction. Uh, you have some parts, uh, the SOAP uh, as the most popular way of doing integration, I, I think. Uh, you have also the routing uh, databases, uh, process or orchestration. Uh, that, that's fine. That, that shows uh, you overall picture of the um, integration, but it shows you only the uh, from the, it shows you integration from the infrastructure point of view. It doesn't show you uh, any details about the implementation. And we as programmers are meant to do things, not manage them, but write them and uh, do that correctly. So uh, th this is fine for management to show them what uh, nice pictures that it, everything will be uh, well structured and will work. However, for us as developers, 
the most important part is uh, how we start each other, the application with the service bus. And we start from the other application and the service bus is um, theoretically a black box. We just send something and we expect something in the back and uh, everything should work. The black box is uh, a term which can be uh, uh, read as something bad, uh, uh, like something bad. I mean, uh, if something is black box, it, it everything is covered and uh, you don't know what happens uh, inside. So, uh, let's take a look. Uh, we have some component which implements uh, uh, some integration logic or logic necessary for uh, do, doing some transition from one system to second. And uh, inside this component, we can use multiple uh, te techniques to implement that logic. Uh, we can use uh, the simplest uh, solution, the Java-based uh, integration using the CDI. We can also use the workflow stuff, rules or, or routing. Uh, as you know, uh, most, of, most of the work uh, related to the integration is moving data from one place to the second place and transforming it in, in the middle. And uh, we can do that with, with Camel. I, I hope I will have uh, time to show you that on the demo. Uh, after my talk, there is a break, I think, and uh, there is another talk about the camel. Uh, you will learn it uh, very, very well with fathers of, of, of the of the camel. They are sitting uh, on the on the uh, audience, so uh, I will not introduce you to the camel basics. Uh, I will just show you how easy it, it is, how nice uh, it fits to the switch yard. Okay, so uh, I said about the CDI stuff. Uh, I think CDI is a, a great way of, of uh, gluing different parts. Uh, as uh, integration solution, switch art uh, can be used with, together with EJP stuff. And uh, what I really hate in application <laughs> servers and I, what I really didn't want to do was uh, XML stuff. I remember uh, EJP and uh, it was always scaring me that uh, I need to write, remember all this stuff, uh, where the, those files should be placed and so on. So CDI is uh, simplification, it's great simplification. And uh, even compared to the Spring framework, it, it does a great job. Just put at inject, just put, put at name, and that's everything. You don't need to use any XML stuff except the empty marker file. That, that's, that's great. I mean, uh, I started learning CDI when I started working with the switch out. And believe me, I was able to do my first project with CDI with two clicks. It, wa it was working right uh, after dropping to, to, to AS7. I was really surprised how, how easy it, it was. I, I was trying doing this, uh, do, do the same thing with the SIM, with other uh, stuff like J JSF. And uh, I was spending hours and hours digging the Google to solve the problem. CDI is great. That th I, I mean, you can forget everything about the switch out, but you must recall that CDI is great. Uh, because, uh, uh, okay, I, I, I went out from the Bing services and uh, I was focusing about the, on the CDI, but uh, what, what the Bing component I really is. It, it's a simple Java class which has uh, some methods. Uh, it has some uh, well-defined contract. The contract uh, in terms of, of being service is, is Java interface. When, when, once you implement the interface, you have a service implementation and you have the service interface. Uh, so it's Java-based, so th there is no complexity, uh, there is no uh, really uh, additional stuff. Maybe I, I should mention about that, that it's annotation driven, but the whole CDI is annotation driven, so it's not new for us. For us, uh, so let's let's go and uh, take a look on the Bing service deployed on on the uh, switch yard. So we start from the service interface. Service interface in uh, application integration is, uh, I think, the core part. You should start from. Um, you should not start from. Uh, writing the implementation but from defining the, the contract. That's, that's the tip if you would like to, to start doing some integration. So uh, we have the, the one method uh, which uh, allows to pass the order and uh, returns the 
uh, status of, of the order, if it's accepted or not. And now we have a really simple Java class which implements this, uh, uh, this interface. We, uh, of course, have some logic inside. And now it's, uh, this one annotation turns uh, this Java class into switch out service. That's all. So let, let's go to, to the next uh, slide. Uh, sometimes we have a composite services. We have a entry point. We try to call some external systems to obtain the status or, or check the, the warehouse if there are items to send or not. Uh, in this, in, in this, uh, in this um, cases, we can use uh, an another uh, annotation called reference. So it allows to reference another service deployed on the switchyard. And uh, in this, in this uh, example, we refer the inventory service. As you may see, it's, uh, well, you, 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 you don't see that, but it's uh, interface name. So everything is based on the interfaces. Like uh, with CDI, uh, it's type safe. So <coughs> as long as you use uh, bin services, you can use uh, Java interfaces. And uh, for you, it looks like static call in the Java, not, nothing more. Okay, so uh, another another thing w which is uh, related to the application integration, but not often use it. Uh, I mean, uh, from time to time you need to do some user interface. Well, and uh, that's where problem start starts growing because uh, uh, how to call the service, uh, how to uh, let user pass the the, the information. Uh, well, I in the simplest scenario, it should be a uh, HTML form letting you to pass the, the, the submit to, to the uh, HTTP server or something. So, uh, because we are running on the uh, regular application server, we can use uh, JSF. I already told that JSF is uh, heavy and causing some problems, but it was before CDI was invented. So, uh, now with CDI, you can use, you can uh, reference services deployed on the switcher. Uh, using app reference and your web application will be capab ca capable to send requests directly to the switch art just using it as, as a regular Java bean. So th that's a great thing. You don't need to create any HTTP client or something. You just pass the, the request using the Java interface. So here we see uh, HTML code with, with the form and uh, there are a uh, few value fields uh, which allows you to bind the values uh, to the Pojo, pass it to uh, server. And here uh, we have a, a JSF bin which allows you to uh, call the um, call the switchyard switchyard service. Um, in the first line, you can see we have uh, order service. That's a reference injected injected by the CDI and JSF application. Uh, it's not really uh, linked with, with SwitchYard. It only knows the service interface and the uh, uh, data structures w which should be exchanged and everything else is, is covered by the SwitchYard. Okay, that, that's how, how this application should look like. Uh, so it's, it's really a dummy form which creates requests and uh, sh shows uh, some response. I if you would like to see how it works, uh, it's a quick start. So you can download it from, from the internet. It's also, uh, can, it can be easily deployed uh, on the switch out right after downloading for, from the internet. Another interesting topic uh, related to application integration is uh, routing. So as, as I said, for routing we use the, the we use um, Camel. Camel is uh, Apache project, so it wasn't uh, invented uh, in uh, Red Hat, however, it became really, really popular. So instead of uh, creating another library for mediation, for transformation and so on, uh, we just took the camel and uh, we use it as, as the routing engine. If you would like to move messages uh, from different places and uh, operate of, uh, on top of them, you can use the uh, use camel. I think it was really possible uh, to do uh, services with uh, camel in Jago CSB, so in uh, SwitchArt we 
go deeper in, uh, into the integration with Camel and uh, you can implement the whole service using Java interface but internally um, as, as uh, Camel mediation. So uh, client see on regular Java interface and call the methods but inside we call the Camel and Camel road which can be less or more complex. In this, in this case uh, um, those, those pictures are part of uh, Java uh, Enterprise Integration Patterns book. So uh, th there is a really bo huge book about the application integration uh, which describes uh, common patterns used with uh, application integration. Uh, do you recall a book called uh, um, Design Patterns uh, wrote by some, some guys from the US? I, I, I don't, don't remember. Yes, yes. So, so almost every student which uh, would like to start programming should read this book uh, and the uh, uh, creators of Enterprise Integration Patterns book uh, did the same but on the different domain. They uh, stepped back from the programming itself, they went to the um, uh, integration domain, they collected the common ideas, uh, named them, described and give them a graphical form. So uh, if you will read this book, you will be uh, able to uh, see that it's content-based routing, uh, which means th th this, this small picture means that we take the message body and on top of this body we evaluate some conditions and we move the uh, message to different places depend on the uh, content. Okay, uh, rat routing services. Um, I already said that, uh, but what is uh, really nice also in this uh, integration with Camel, you can call uh, another SwitchArt services in inside the Camel road. Maybe I will share you uh, share an example of uh, Camel road. So, um, as I said, you will learn Camel basic later, uh, but just to uh, share some uh, s some basic ideas. We implement the order service here, so it's our uh, entry point for our road. Then we log the received, received body, uh, call some bin, and filter uh, messages. If it has a high priority, then it goes to uh, shipping service. And shipping service is uh, another service implemented inside the switcher. So uh, it's uh, deco uh, decoupled, so it doesn't depend, it's only on reference. So you don't have to put uh, two screens to write the whole mediation. You can split it and uh, implement uh, it in small parts. It uh, gives you another benefit. Uh, testing of, of smaller parts is much easier than, uh, than bigger, uh, bigger parts. Um, beans, in beans in Camel are uh, similar to bean component in uh, SwitchArt. However, they uh, are defined uh, in different ways. Uh, Camel has a powerful integration with uh, different re um, re registries. So it allows you to um, look up beans from the spring context if you use the spring context. And uh, what we did, we, we did some uh, bridge which allows you to look up um, CDI beans, by, uh, beans defined as the CDI uh, stuff inside the mediation logic. So uh, what, what we really need is, is, ju is just to put the app name and then you can refer this, uh, this name in the camel road and call the CDI bin uh, instead of putting the whole, uh, the, the whole path to the class or method. So uh, it's discovered by the, by the runtime, so it's not turned on all the time. It, de it, it detects if you have a CDI deployment, if, if you have then the CDI integration is automatically um, turned on for you. Mm, okay, so that's an example of uh, CDI bin, which I did something with, with content. Actually, it should be I did nothing, uh, but it's uh, application scope bin, so it's uh, a global uh, bin, which is uh, uh, resist as long as the application runs. So. Uh, it gets uh, some content and returns the contents and uh, the name of the bin is my bin. So we would like to use this bin in uh, our road and here uh, we call it. 
So there are two additional lines uh, in, in, in this road. The first one is uh, splitting uh, the, the content after the new line and uh, filtering uh, the, the results. If it starts with the item, then we call the link. Uh, uh, you will learn that uh, later with, with examples. Under another stuff, uh, if you run uh, application int integration, you probably uh, will go to the application, uh, to the business processes. That's uh, some important term um, also introduced by uh, us, the part of the SOA staff. Uh, everything in SOA was uh, leading you to implement business processes. And business processes was uh, invented or introduced to uh, make some things automa automatically and uh, to track the progress of, of some, some stuff you have in the company. So for example, if, if you have a, a shipping, uh, then you, you can check if it's accepted, if, if it's already sent or not. And uh, in, in SwitchUp we used BPMN, so it's a uh, second version, th there is a second version of uh, BPMN. It's a standard form, which, uh, well, it's a standard done as uh, Oasis and uh, it has uh, graphical forms defined, uh, it has also a syntax for the process defined, and uh, it's also implemented as part of another JBoss project called, uh, I, think J I think it's implemented in JBPM, but I'm, I'm not sure. It's integrated and uh, uh, you, have much, uh, uh, you have much more possibilities using BPMN together with the switch out, so you can call uh, switch out services from the BPM, uh, BPMN process. Uh, normally BPMN is uh, uh, limited. Uh, the, the number of uh, protocols b uh, supported by the BPMN is, is limited. Actually it's not uh, about the integration. BPMN is about the transition from one state to the second state in the process. So they do, do not care about the integration as we as, we, as uh, ESB developers. So, um, the service, uh, your process, your workflow can be exposed as a service in the switch out. And uh, calling another methods in the service can make a transition from one state to the second state in the process. That, that's really nice uh, and uh, makes uh, business processes less painful for, for us. Okay. Uh, service orchestration. If you use BPL, BPL uh, you can use it together with the Rift stuff. It's um, also supported by the switch out. However, BPL is, uh, well, I would say it's the older brother of the BPMN. Uh, it's uh, rather older technology uh, and uh, it has some limitations. The first one is that you must define uh, WISD. You, you must define service interface using the web services description language. So it limits uh, a bit uh, because um, uh, you don't have often, uh, you don't have all the time WISD for, for your services. Sometimes you use the Java interfaces, uh, sometimes you, you use a simple interface wi which is only a uh, name of, of the method and, and uh, it um, arguments. So uh, it, it causes a uh, bigger problem when it goes to the deployment and also uh, exception handling in the BPL is, uh, uh, is a topic which uh, makes usually people laugh because the process definition is uh, uh, usually two screens and uh, compensations uh, after exceptions is another 10 screens. So uh, handling exceptions with, with BPL I is uh, really painful. Um, so let, let's go to the application uh, architecture and uh, we started with uh, implementation <coughs> logic and uh, we call this service, we can reference something as, as you saw on uh, BIN, uh, BIN uh, slides and uh, wha what is the difference between the, uh, calling the service and referencing the service. So uh, th there is a term of the contract in the switch out and contract may be defined uh, in three different ways. So the most popular for the Java uh, developers will be probably the Java interface. 
Uh, next, if, if you would like to call your service using uh, external clients, you can use the WISM and uh, the internal, uh, internal contract uh, and internal uh, calls can be covered with uh, ESP interface. So e ESP interface is, uh, I think, simplest from those three and it allows you all only to pass the input and the output argument. Okay, uh, well, when we take a look on the application we started describing, we have uh, order service and uh, we have a uh, web application, the JSF application. Uh, oh, oh, sorry, we have a web service, here we have a, a web application and at the end we have inventory service which checks if, if uh, our item is uh, uh, available or not. Okay, uh, so we are going to scary part. I mean, uh, there there must be some XML, and uh, uh, sadly we have some. Uh, we we try to avoid it make, making messy. Uh, that's wha why you have a great polling for for uh, this uh, XML stuff. However, uh, let's start from uh, good things. Things. It's based on the standard, so it's not uh, uh, vendor specific, uh, it's uh, SCA stuff, so it should be more or less the same as defined in the specification. And uh, we start from the composite, which represents uh, some, some part of, of the application. And uh, it might have uh, multiple services, multiple components, so it's uh, some kind of the container. And inside, Inside this uh, descriptor we have uh, four parts, uh, service, imp uh, service definition, inventory component, order component, and order service component. Uh, I will show you uh, on the next slides how, how, how those parts look like. I hope you won't get scared. Uh, so the first one is the order service, which allows you to expose uh, your service using uh, salt binding. And uh, that lets you call the application from external client. Um, sadly, my mouse cursor doesn't work. I, oh maybe I will have some pointer. If it's a pointer or something. Uh, yeah, you can. Oh, great. OK. Um, OK, so. Uh, here we have a reference to, to, to WISDL uh, file which contains the uh, description of, of the service and here we point to the uh, part of the WISDL we would like to uh, expose. Uh, one WISDL uh, file can contain multiple port types so uh, that's why it's uh, a bit more complicated uh, than it should be. And here you have a binding soap which allows you to um, define the width and uh, other stuff. So uh, it's not really important. Uh, what is really important that you will be able to call it for, from external stuff. Uh, uh, another part is uh, inventory service. Inventory service is uh, Java Bean. So it's implemented with Bean uh, and uh, it implements interface inventory service. Um, I forgot to mention you that you don't have to type this stuff. Uh, the first thing you, you can do, you can use the tooling. Uh, it will generate that for you. And uh, another, another way is to use uh, annotations. We have a uh, pluggable scanners uh, which checks uh, annotations present in your project. If it will find add service on your class, it will generate this stuff in the XML. So it, it, it's similar to EJB 3.0. And another stuff is order component. So the, this stuff which allows you to call it from the web application. It has uh, a reference. This, this, this time we have reference. So we just uh, um, want to, to obtain a service with this interface and uh, promote it uh, to all the service. Uh, and at the end, we, we have a uh, order service uh, definition. Here we have the, the service, uh, and uh, I will go back here. We have a uh, promote. Uh, so what the promote attribute uh, does on the uh, beginning, it passed the call to this order service. So 
the service is uh, some kind of the abstract element. It has only the uh, interface and the entry points, but it doesn't know anything about the implementation. And the implementation I is done here in the other service. Okay, and uh, as I said, we have editor for that, so you don't need to mess with the XML. If you're hardcore player, you can, but uh, if you're starting from the, uh, from the sketch, if you would like to get uh, switch up uh, first time, you should start from the graphical editor, you will like it. I will show it works and uh, it's stable. Um, let's go to uh, binding, because I already started talking about entry points to the application, but I did not tell you what, are possi what possib possibilities we, we have. So from this, uh, fr from this side, so it will be your left side, from left side, we have a uh, entry point to the application and uh, from your left, right side, you, you have outgoing, uh, outgoing calls. So in both places, we can uh, use uh, multiple entry points and uh, call different, different services. The simplest uh, will be a file, so we just drop the file somewhere and the switch up will check this file and start processing. And uh, th there is a bunch of things you, you can use. Oops. Uh, gateway bindings are really... Uh, uh, they are not, not uh, linked directly with the implementation. The service implementation doesn't know anything about the bindings. The bindings uh, are separate place. So it's like, um, let's say, uh, calling from one place to, to the second place. You don't have to know uh, from which place somebody calls you. The most important part is that it, uh, he called you. So uh, as long as you don't go to travel to him, you don't need to know wh where, he, wh where he stays. So uh, bindings uh, are really based on a uh, few things. There are mm, bindings implemented as co covers for camel internals, for camel stuff, and uh, th there are gateway bindings implemented as, as regular components in, in SwitchArt. Uh, those, those two uh, types have the same syntax, so from developer point of view, you, ha you should not see any differences, uh, because in the editor they look the same. Uh, you can write the new binding if you would like, uh, it, it's not really difficult, uh, you need to implement about two classes to pass the configuration and uh, uh, provide some meta, meta inf entry. So it's not really complicated and uh, uh, tooling, it's also extensible so you can also provide some uh, graphical form for, for your binding if you would like. Um, so w what we support as uh, entry points now, we, we support SOAP, JMS, file, FTP, SFTP, FTPS, SQL, Scheduler, it's Quartz actually, REST, JCA, UDP, TCP, HTTP, and mail. So um, if you recall the SOA stuff, uh, those, those uh, bindings was uh, mentioned as core uh, for, for the SOA implementation. So all of them are already here. Uh, already here. We have also a GPA binding, I forgot to uh, list it, so you can use a regular um, hibernate session uh, just to call it uh, instead of uh, SQL. Okay, I have uh, only 10 minutes left, uh, so le let's go uh, to more, more important topics. Uh, what is really tough with uh, application integration is uh, uh, transformation, validation, and uh, transaction stuff. Uh, the, the deeper you go in those topics, the bigger mess you have. And uh, uh, our intention with SwitchArt was to keep you far away from doing that in the service implementation. So uh, all the, the transformation validation is declarative. So you don't have to explicitly uh, tell uh, in your service implementation that I expect that my payload <coughs> is weighed by the schema, location, this or, or that. No, you don't have to. Uh, it should be done for you uh, before you receive the payload. So uh, that, that's a, a nice step, I think, uh, because it lets you focus on the implementation 
or of the logic instead of uh, doing validation. It's, it's pointless. So uh, the transformation is the, <laughs> the first uh, phase and uh, there are um, uh, different uh, approaches in, in the transformation. You can uh, change the representation of the data, you can flip the XML file into the JSON structure, uh, you can flip the XML stuff into the Java object, uh, but you can also, uh, oh, the representation, uh, it, it meant to be a reader string. So uh, covering from one, t one type to the second, uh, changing the format and, uh, well, sometimes you need to get some more content to make the uh, message ready for uh, further uh, processing. So it's called the enrichment and uh, it can be done uh, in different ways. And th there is uh, one thing I would like to um, mention. There is uh, extended stuff in the switch at 08, which go, uh, go going out uh, close. So you can use uh, CDI beans inside the transformer. So let's see how uh, transformation looks like. So there are uh, different approaches of doing uh, data transformation. The, far, the first one is uh, in the provider. So you receive the payload, you flip it uh, from one form to the second form, you expect to do uh, something more. It's, it's wrong because uh, uh, the more uh, entry points you have, the more application tries to, you, uh, tries to call you, the bigger transform logic you have because not every application uses the same payload uh, the same uh, data format, so you, you start doing transformation inside the uh, provide. It's the simplest way to fail with the SOA implementation. Don't do that. Uh, the second stuff is, uh, the, the second way is to do that on the consumer side. So you define the contract and the consumers should keep the contract and prepare the data in form you expect. Well, but that breaks uh, SOA princip uh, principles. Uh, you, the application should be agnostic and uh, if you have uh, some legacy application and uh, if application cannot send you HTTP POST request, it should be able to do that in the different way and uh, it shouldn't be complicated also from the on, on this side. Uh, so uh, there is a third way of doing that in the middle. So what we did with we in, in the switch ads, we did that in the middle. However, it's also declarative. Uh, transformation is done um, dynamically for you. So we knew the contract the service expects to implement and we knew the uh, payload type. So what we do uh, before a provider, a service provider gets the, co the, the payload, we flip it in the necessary form. So if you receive the XML stuff, if you receive a SOAP call and you expect, the, um, you implement the Java interface, uh, you of course expect the POJO not the uh, XML nodes or something to pass. So uh, that will be done for you automatically. Th there are multiple transform uh, transforms uh, you can use. You can use uh, JackB, XSLT, JSON and Smooks. So if you would like to use Smooks, uh, just, just go. Uh, that's example implementation of uh, Transformer. Uh, it gets, oh. it, it gets uh, DOM element and creates uh, Java Pojo. It's, it's really easy. Uh, those methods are simply reading the mm, XML contents. Uh, the validation and validators are, uh, on, uh, from the developer point of view, done similar. So you declare uh, how to validate given type and uh, that's all. So w if, if you will receive the uh, order element in the XML, it will be validated for you before the provider gets the content. So it, it should avoid you getting the malformed payload. And uh, uh, except transformation and validation, we have a uh, support for, for the policies. Policies are uh, not related to those two topics. And they are more about security and uh, transaction stuff. So. Uh, the more uh, application you try to integrate, the uh, more complicated you are going to be. Uh, then you, you, you're going to uh, places where you need to coordinate uh, state, uh, database state in different applications. And uh, to do that, you need, the, you need to simply use uh, transactions. Um, so transactions are 
Uh, also declarative, you just tell um, what what is uh, your expectation for, for the transaction. It propagates the transaction and uh, uh, if you receive the message from the JMS, it should be uh, continue the JM JMS transaction should be continued to done of the processing by the provider. Uh, there are uh, different um, types of, of the trans uh, different uh, scopes of the transaction supported. Uh, but let, let's go. Uh, security is uh, also defined in the same attribute. Uh, once you, you require your service to be called using HTTPS, uh, not the HTTP. Uh, you just declare confidentiality and uh, switch out will refuse HTTP request. Okay, uh, pre previous presentation was about testing and uh, Arquivian guys told that testing is really important. We, th we think the same. Uh, it's really important and uh, the biggest problem with uh, testing integration is um, that usually it's heavy to test. You need to bootstrap the application server and so on and so on. So uh, we would like to avoid that, and we created dedicated extension for the JUnit. Like they did, we did the same, but we did that in the better form. And uh, uh, you can test switch out the application without running the JBoss in the embedded uh, mode. You can uh, test the <coughs> transformation, remote <coughs> interfaces, and uh, implementation logic using regular. JUnit class. So let's go uh, and see how regular uh, test looks like. So we have a regular test. Uh, we have a, a run with. So instead of Arquilian runner, we use switch out runner. Then we have a test configuration. Here we point to the um, mixing. Mixing is uh, some kind of the switch. It allows you to turn on CDI integration default it's uh, by default it's uh, disabled so if you have a bin implementation then you need the CDI mixing to, to start using it uh, going to the next we have a service operation so uh, you cannot inject directly the uh, CDI bin but you can uh, use the service reference in terms uh, of the internals or in terms of the switch at internal so uh, as Service interface can be different. We use a uh, general pr purpose annotation. It allows you to call also services which has a WISL uh, interface or uh, internal ESB uh, interface. And the last part, wow, uh, is uh, calling the service. Here uh, we send the payload and we receive some payload and do some assertions. So here, what's uh, here, the that's the place where the magic is done. For you, it doesn't require anything more. Everything should be done uh, for you. And uh, <coughs> next topic is uh, mixings. Uh, CDI mixing, uh, as I said, enables CDI integration. Uh, we have um, a few more mixings. Uh, the first one, uh, th there is a naming mixing. There is also a transaction mixing. One for, from mixings is also a Smooks. Uh, Smooks allows you to do transformation. It has a uh, helper method which allows you to test the transformation. So going to the next binding test, it shows, uh, this slide shows uh, HTTP call emulated for, from, the, uh, from the test. Okay, uh, because I'm running out of the time, Yes, uh, I already did. Um, I will skip demo time. I will try uh, to get you interested in, in something different. So there is also a support for the cloud because we have to support clouds. And uh, what I would like to tell you is that 08, switch as 08 is uh, close to release. And uh, what is really important, it should be part of the alpha release of uh, SOA platform. Uh, this year, and uh, it will be SOA Platform 6. So it's it's successor of uh, JBoss USB. If you would like to uh, see what what's going to be done in SOA Platform 6, you, you can uh, try uh, switch out 08. It will be probably alpha <coughs> of the SOA Platform 6, and uh, you can see what what functions will be. 
and uh, how it looks like. From new stuff, we have uh, support for JCA. Uh, if you have uh, legacy applications uh, which are integrated using streams over the JCA, it's supported. We also have a batching support. If you have a larger amount of the data to move from one system to the second, or you simply have lots of the data to process from the legacy system, just use the batching. And there is also support for role-based security. Uh, you, you can control who can call what, and uh, there are some minor enhancements in the DPM and, and uh, <coughs> CDI support in the transformer and validator. So uh, that's all from the slides. Uh, if you are interested, please join our community uh, at jboss.org, jboss .org, switch up or simply switch up that org. Um, play with 07 final because it's table 08 is as still a snapshot and uh, you can also chat with us including myself uh, on, on, on the free note just just jump in okay any questions please ask okay so my friend from Poland uh, told me that if there are no questions, th people are scared to ask. And you should start asking uh, once more. Do you have any questions? You probably have. Do you use JBoss USB? Any from you? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there is one, one hand raised. You, you use JBoss USB? Do you like SwitchArt? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> What scares you about the switch out? The testing? Uh, how it was done with uh, JBoss USB? I'm, I don't know. Okay, so, so he, here uh, I can show you a really quick a test uh, here. <laughs> Okay, so uh, what? One minute. Uh, here we enter the service, and uh, m maybe with uh, editor we, it will look like uh, will look better. We pass the pojo to the service, and uh, we do assertions of the return. It's just a matter of mocking some, some parts, right? Uh, if you do integration testing on the test environment, it, it's not a pain, right? Because uh, it's uh, meant to, to test the whole application uh, before the production. However, if you use the switch art, uh, you can mock the SOAP request. You can mock also REST request. So it's still HTTP calls. Uh, however, you cannot mock file existence or something, right? Uh, yeah, but we have a test which creates embedded FTP server. So you can test uh, a switch up uh, calling embedded uh, FTP server. So that should avoid any external resources. I think it, 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 it can be done. Okay, so thank you.